Are you still testing circuits using resistance? Let me show you guys how to use a voltmeter on a simple circuit. How do you use a voltmeter for voltage drop testing so you can test the circuit dynamically? Let's take a look. Listen up. What you do next can really affect the way you test electrical circuits. Are you still testing for continuity instead of doing a dynamic test like voltage drop? Stick around, let me show you guys how to use a voltmeter and how to properly set up and do a voltage drop test so you can dynamically check for unwanted resistance in an automotive circuit. Grab your voltmeters, let's take a look. So real simple guys, here's my ground circuit, here's my positive circuit and these two are going to be acting as my battery. From there, we're going into my input for this pull switch. My output is located here, which I'm running to pin 30 of one of six relays, which you guys can see here. Then I have my output 87 here, and that's running to my power feed, which is located right here for this particular headlight. And my ground, which kind of looks like it's overlapping, but it's separate. My ground here is running a fixed ground to my light bulb here. Let's power it up. So as you guys could see, this circuit is working perfectly fine. I went ahead and pulled my pull switch, which can act like a normal headlamp switch or whatever switch you want, and my light comes on nice and bright. So now let me set up my voltmeter so I can take some basic measurements. So this way you guys could see how we can use voltage drop and how voltage drop works on a good circuit. Awesome, what you guys are seeing is I'm connected across my battery, negative and positive, and I'm getting 12.6, 12.7 volts, just like we would see on a 100% fully charged automotive battery. The most important thing whenever doing a voltage drop test is the circuit has to be in a dynamic state. It needs to be on. So let's go ahead and turn on our circuit. Now we have current flow. So now we can begin to start doing our voltage drop tests. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ground lead here and I'm going to go to my input side of my switch. Now, if you notice, I got 2.3 millivolts of voltage drop. That means that from this point here to this point here, I'm losing two millivolts, which isn't much. From there, I'm gonna to go to the output side of my switch, which is giving me about seven millivolts of voltage drop. So that means inside of that switch, we have just enough resistance where we're losing seven volts going through the switch. Now from there, we're gonna go over here to 30 on my relay side, and we're about 9.4, 9.3 millivolts of drop. Now from there, I'm gonna to go to the output side of my relay, and then now, inside of the relay, because of the contacts, we have a little bit of voltage drop. So we have some resistance there on those contacts because we have 62 millivolts of loss from this point here, which is gonna be acting as our battery, to my output side of my actual relay. From there, my next test point is gonna be straight at the headlight. If I go straight to the headlight, Notice how now my meter is showing 134.8.7 millivolts. That means that from this point here, all the way through my circuit, ending up at the bulb, we're losing 134 millivolts. Because we are on the power side, depending on who taught you and what you're reading, could be upwards of 300 millivolts, which would be acceptable for the power side. So from what we can see right now, that is a normal reading. So now let's go ahead and retry this using the ground side of the actual circuit. Again, staying with the circuit on, right? Because we're checking in a dynamic state. I am going to do a voltage drop test from my post to my terminal, right? That's what we're doing right here. 
So now we're going to do voltage drop on the ground. Again, we're going to keep our circuit on. We want to make sure there's current flow. So this is acting as my negative terminal, and I'm going to go straight over here across to my light bulb on the ground side. So if you notice, we got about 99, 98 millivolts of voltage drop from my battery post all the way back to my ground at that actual bulb. Now, I want to point this out because this is where a lot of instructors and some technicians fall short. I've heard it said before that you want zero on the ground side. If you have zero on the ground voltage drop, that is indicating that that circuit has no current flow. And I'm about to prove it to you here in a sec. So anytime you're doing a voltage drop, particularly on the ground side, if there's current flow, you're expecting to see some sort of voltage drop. This is why we always teach that you want to be as close as possible to zero, but not zero. If you have zero, you have a problem. So let me go ahead and set that up and we're going to rerun this particular test. Beautiful. So now I went ahead and pulled my switch, but what am I reading? I'm reading 12.6 volts on the ground side. Why is that? Let's go ahead and analyze this real quick, guys. So what do I have? I have my power feed connected the way it should be. So I have power or voltage going into the positive side and it's going through my bulb and it's ending up on the ground side looking for a normal ground. Why am I seeing source voltage here? This is indicating to me that all the way up to the bulb, through the bulb and back to ground, that circuit is 100% okay. Why? Because I'm reading source voltage because this system is still connected properly and voltage is trying to find its path back to ground. Let me add a supplemental ground and let's see what our meter says. So I ran a supplemental ground and we got 120 millivolts drop from our ground post to the ground side of this light bulb. So this indicates to me as a technician that I have an open ground circuit because if I remove it, I get source voltage. So this means that I have a missing ground. My ground circuit is open. This is where voltage drop comes into play, guys. If we're able to determine this based off of our test points, this is gonna help us really well understand where the fault is on the circuit we're actually testing. So I got my circuit back up the way it should be, but what I did here differently is I added this real stat here in the center. All right, guys, so I got my circuit wired back up, but now the difference is, is I added a resistance here. So this way we can play around with that resistance so you guys could see how it's going to affect my voltage drop. So what I did is I ran my ground to these resistance so here I got 197 millivolts voltage drop from the ground battery post back to my ground on my light. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some resistance. You guys could tell right away that my light dimmed. The moment my light dimmed, check out what my voltmeter says, 4.9 volt voltage drop. This means that from this point here to the ground side of my light, I'm losing around 5 volts. So now let's do what the famous Jim Morton says and let's walk the meter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lead and I'm leaving my ground feed and I'm going to go to the input side or the output side of this resistance. We're going to call this a connector. So I'm on the output side of the connector and we're showing 4.9 so it's still about the same. Now I'm going to go to the input side of that particular connector. So when I go to the input side of the connector, it drops to 80 millivolts. For me as a tech, if this was a connector like we're simulating, the problem is going to be inside of the connector because if I go back to the output side, we got 4 volts. And then now let me go back to the input side and I got 80 millivolts. So that means that from this point, which is my battery post, all the way up to this electrical connector, we're okay. The moment we go through the connector, that's when the unwanted resistance occurs. This is why we got a four volt voltage drop there. 
the problem we're having here is a problem is inside of this electrical connector that we're simulating right here. And if I go back to my light, we're roughly about five volts drop on the ground side. So now let me go ahead and set this back down. Let's add some more resistance, see what happens. So I added some more resistance here. And would you look at that? We're about seven volts. So now we're losing seven volts on this circuit. And again, let's go ahead and walk the meter. Let's walk the meter. We're going to call this a computer. On the output side of the module, we got seven volts. The ground feed to the module has 62 millivolts. So again, for me, this means that from my battery post to the input side of that module, I'm around 67 to 70 millivolts. On the output side, I got seven volts. So this means that the module is the one that has unwanted resistance or the connector, and that's what's causing my voltage drop to my light. Now, if I go ahead and reconnect this, and I remove that resistance, what happens? Once we remove it, look at our meter. We're at 195 millivolts. Yes, it is very close to the 200 mark, but that's acceptable. So now you guys could see that connected right back to the ground where it should be. And I put this with very little resistance, even though there's still some resistance here. And we could see that in the meter because we got 199 millivolts of voltage drop on the ground side. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and simulate this again using the resistance, but we're going to use the resistance on the power side so you guys could see if there's a difference. Let me set that up. Beautiful. So now I got my light set up and I got my test lead on the positive side. I got my red lead on the battery positive, my black lead on my light bulb or my load positive as well. So I got 213 millivolts there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lead and we're going to begin to walk it back. So we're going to our electrical junction block and on the output side of the junction block, we got about 150 millivolts. And on the input side, we got about 120. So that right there is an indication that we have very little resistance in there. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that back in, and I'm going to add some resistance. So now we got 5 volts voltage drop on the positive side. I'm going to go ahead and remove my lead, and I'm going to go to the output side of this junction block that we're going to call it here. And we got 4.5, 4.9 volts voltage drop. On the input side, what do we got? We got about 90. So that means that on the input side, we're within spec, but on the output side, we're way above spec. So this would mean the problem is right here. If this, is a, if this was a vehicle that I was testing, and this was a junction block, I would open this block to test it or get it replaced. Again, this is how we walk the meter from specific points or test points and then determine if that's where the problem is located. Pop quiz, what happened here? 12.58 volts, my switch is pulled, this circuit should be on. What's going on? Drop it in the comments, let me know. So let's find out what's going on with this circuit. Right now we're on the power side. So let's go to the ground side and see what we're measuring. We're measuring 12.6 on the ground side of the circuit. If I go back to the positive side, I'm also reading 12.6. If you guys said we have an open circuit, you're 100% correct. So let's walk our meter. We're going to take our lead. We're going to go to the output side. If I go to the output side, I have 12.6. Now let's go to my input side and see what we get. Zero. Remember earlier what I told you, if you're at zero, there is no current flow. What this means now is that this resistance is set so high, there is no current flowing between these two points. This is why this light is dead at the moment, because if I go back to my input side, 
it's showing zero. This means, and this is verifying, there is no current flow in this circuit. Just so that way you guys could see, I'm gonna set my meter to amperage, so then this way you could see there is no current flowing through this circuit. Voltage drop doesn't lie. Test don't lie. What we're looking at right here is I put my meter in amperage and my meter is in series, currents flowing through the meter, through my resistance and back to my load. What are we reading? Zero. So just like I mentioned with the voltage drop test, this is indicating to you that there is no current flowing between that resistance or whatever component you want to simulate that as. So again, this is letting you know that you have an open circuit. This is why we were reading 12 volts when we got over there to our power feed of that actual lamp. This also holds true on the ground side. If you guys see zero when you're doing a voltage drop from ground to ground, that's indicating that that circuit between those two points is open or there is no current flow. Here, again, we're from the positive side to the positive side and we're showing zero amps. My voltage drop showed zero volts. So this means there was no current flowing. Now, let's reduce some of the resistance and see what happens. Once I remove the resistance, look at my current flow, my current flow is back. So again, if I put this on the highest setting, we have no current flow. Just like we saw with our voltage drop, again, your test guys are gonna tell you exactly what's going on with the circuit, all you got to do is put those pieces together and that's going to show you guys what is wrong with that circuit. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is again, this is to prove out that if there's current flowing, we're going to have a voltage drop. So I'm going to go across this fuse right here and notice how my voltage drop drops to what? Zero. Now, if I go to the, my next fuse, What are we measuring? We got a voltage drop. Why do we have a voltage drop? Because we have a load that's actually on. And once I turn the load off, what happens to my voltage drop? It goes away. And I'll turn my load back on. And what do I have again? A voltage drop. So again, guys, just by doing that voltage drop across the fuse is indicating to you that whenever there's current flow, you're going to see a voltage drop on your meter. This is why this test is so important for you guys to do because it's gonna help you guys 100% be able to pinpoint where the fault is with your electrical circuit. And that's it guys. I hope you guys are able to see how simple it is to do a voltage drop test. All you gotta do is go from positive to positive, negative to negative, and remember what I taught you. If you're seeing completely zero, that means that there is no current flow in that particular circuit. If you're seeing source voltage, that means you're missing part of one of the two. And speaking of data, YouTube's data is saying that the majority of you guys that watch this content aren't followers and aren't subscribers. Do me a huge favor. If this information was useful, give us a like, give us a follow, and also turn on the notification bell so you get a ding every time I drop a new video. If this information was useful, go ahead and drop it in the comments and let me know how you were finding these types of faults prior to learning all about voltage drop. And again, guys, I really appreciate you guys giving me the time of day. This is Oscar Gomez from Master Automotive Training. I'll see you guys on the next one.